Well, howdy there, partner. Do you ever feel like your faith is as wild as riding a tornado? Or maybe you're doing the old deuce a doo chasing chickens, wondering how to grow closer to God. Well, grab yourself some barbecue pork waffles and settle in, because we got just the thing. If you've been looking for answers, hang on tight, partner. The mobile sanctuary is on the way, and it's going to be bigger than a barn dance. Woo, doggy! Don't go nowhere, because we're about to grow in faith, y'all. Welcome to the mobile sanctuary. Where the broken can find their way In the quiet of your heart You're never alone Welcome to the place you call Welcome to The Mobile Sanctuary. Thank you for joining us. Here is your host, Pastor Phil Diaz. Hello, and welcome to The Mobile Sanctuary. I'm Pastor Phil Diaz, and this is Church Anywhere. Woohoo! All right. Well, I'm thrilled to be here with you guys here tonight, and as we begin the session, I invite you to please help us expand our online church community. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If tonight's message resonates with you, go ahead and hit that share button and share that with a friend. Help us spread the message of the mobile sanctuary far and wide. Also, we would love to hear from you, and so tonight there'll be different opportunities to put your comments in the chat, all right? So if you're able to, Type your comments, type your thoughts, type your prayer requests in the chat as we go through the session here tonight. All right, I'm excited about it, so let's get into it and let's dive into tonight's topic. Well, howdy there, partner. Y'all ever heard the tale of Faithless Jim? They say he was the most faithless cowboy this side of the Mississippi. Why, Jim wouldn't even trust his own boots to stay on his feet. He was riding through life like a tumbleweed in a dust storm, never staying put, never believing in nothing but his own two hands. And let's just say them hands weren't exactly good at wrangling faith. One day, old Jim found himself in a real pickle, caught between a herd of stampeding longhorns and a cactus patch as prickly as a porcupine at a family reunion. He tried every trick in the cowboy book, from chasing chickens to riding the wind, but nothing was working. That's when it hit him like a bolt from the blue. Maybe, just maybe, it was time to stop trying to ride life alone. So Jim did what no one thought he'd do. He tipped his hat, dropped to his knees, and hollered out, Jesus, if you can help me out of this here mess, I reckon I'll trust you from now on. Well, wouldn't you know it, quicker than a jackrabbit on hot coal, Jim found himself safe and sound, sitting pretty under a shady tree. From that day on, old Faithless Jim, he wasn't faithless no more. He found that a little trust in Jesus can make a cowboy's life a whole lot easier, even when the trail gets rough. So if y'all ever feel like you're riding a tornado without a saddle, just remember Jim's story. Trusting in Jesus ain't just for Sundays. It'll make you a better cowboy every day of the week. Yeehaw! And there you have it, partner. The tale of Faithless Jim turned faith-filled Jim, living proof that even the wildest cowboy can find faith in the good Lord. Have you ever wondered what it means to have a faith that's really strong? I mean, think about all of the challenges that you face in life. And think about all of the ways in which maybe you have questioned faith over your lifetime. Maybe perhaps you're right now in that state where you're just simply questioning everything in your life. Maybe you're in that period in your life where right now you're wanting to go deeper with God, but you just don't even know how. Well, tonight we're going to talk about faith. And faith is foundational to our walk with Jesus Christ. But it's also something that we can continually grow in as Christians. And so tonight we're going to explore the nature of faith, and we're going to be able to look at some practical ways that we can help develop a stronger, better, and more resilient faith 
in our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go ahead and dive into everything here tonight. We're going to begin with a key verse from the book of Hebrews. Let's check it out. Our main scripture for tonight comes from Hebrews 11.1, 1, which says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This verse beautifully encapsulates the essence of faith, trusting in God's promises even when we cannot see them. But how do we cultivate this kind of faith in our daily lives? Let's dive deeper into what this means for us here tonight. And now, back to Pastor Phil. Faith. <laughs> it's the confidence in what we hope for. Faith is also the assurance about what we don't see. <laughs> and so here's the thing about all of that. In our world today, we see people very easily put their faith in all sorts of things. Every day I see people put their faith in leaders, politics, government, celebrities, money, fame, success, you name it, people will put their faith into it. Amen? Now, this kind of faith that we are going to be talking about here tonight is putting our faith in none of those things. None of those things. Our faith that we're going to be talking about here tonight is a faith that's going to be honoring to God because the faith that we're talking about is being placed all in Him. Amen? Everything, all in Him. Faith, all in God. Amen? All right? So more than anything else, we need to have a faith that we can place within the Lord. All right? And the kind of faith that I believe that is honoring to God is a faith that is worshipful unto him, all right? This is the kind of faith that I think God is looking for amongst us as Christians. Yet, how do we develop this kind of faith? And how do we trust God in all of this stuff? So we're gonna dive deeper into a few things that we can break down and hopefully give to you here tonight in a practical way that where you can learn how you can develop a stronger faith in the Lord. Let's take a moment and discuss what Pastor Phil is trying to say to us. What does it truly mean to have faith in something or someone we cannot see? And how does this unseen trust shape the way we live our visible, everyday lives? Take a moment and type your comments in the chat and let us know what you think. All right, we are here and we're going to dive into our first main point here tonight. And we're going to be talking about understanding the nature of faith. So I'm going to say it again, understanding the nature of faith. Faith is simply more than just a belief. Faith is have confident trust, not just a little bit of trust, not just a I'm not so sure sort of trust. Faith is a confident trust in God and his promises. Amen. And it's about having an assurance in things that we cannot see, things that we can hope for. And even when circumstances challenges us, we can have faith that God is in the center of all things. In fact, we're going to dive into the word of God here tonight. It says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. I want to read that again. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. This verse here in Romans, it reminds us about faith and how faith can grow within us. Amen? Faith can uh, begin to immerse itself within who we are. It can help us see things much more differently. 
And we get this from the word of God. The more that we understand God, the more we understand his promises. And the more we understand his promises, we see how God comes through on his promises. And this helps us to begin to develop a better understanding of God and his character. And this helps strengthen our faith. Amen. Our faith can be easily swayed into so many different things. Sometimes we think that our faith is built upon the paycheck that you get from week to week. Sometimes we put our faith in just simply uh, the leader of the, the free world and who's going to be the president. Our faith can get placed in so many minuscule ways. The truth of the matter is God is in control. Amen. God is in control. Even when life feels out of control, God is in control. So in order to help us strengthen our faith, we need to stand on the word of God. In the Bible, it gives us his promises. And trust me, his promises are true. He promises us things like having eternal life in him. Amen. This promise is true because God says so in his word. Amen. He also says that we are forgiven of our sins. This promise is true. It's in the word. Amen. And then like it says in Romans, faith comes from hearing this message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Amen. Christ is here with us tonight on the mobile sanctuary because I believe that Jesus is wanting to speak to you and he is wanting to knock on the door of your heart here tonight and to let you know that he's here to help you strengthen your faith in him, in him, <laughs> in him nothing else. Because everything else in life, it will fail you. Your money will fail you. <laughs> Success can fail you. Politicians will fail you every single day. But God will not fail you. So how do we strengthen our faith through the word of God? Do you feel strengthened when you read the word? Do you feel strengthened when you see God's promises in the Bible? All right, let's take a moment and discuss that here tonight. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'd love to see you drop some comments down below. As Pastor Phil spoke about, how do you strengthen your faith through God's word? Take a moment and type your comments in the chat and let us know what you think. All right, we are back with our next main point, and we're going to be talking about trusting God in uncertain times. Now, just as a disclaimer, if you want to dive deeper into this topic, we just did a mobile sanctuary on this not too long ago, so you can find that on YouTube. But just to kind of give you an idea and a summary and specific to faith, you know, one of the greatest tests of faith that we see is how we can respond to uncertainty and how we respond to trials. And truly, it's within these moments that we need to learn how we can trust God. Trusting in God is extremely important to the faith that we claim to have. Amen. And so it says this in James chapter one, verses two through three. 
It encourages us, as it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Man, what a powerful scripture that we have here tonight. So in thinking about what this scripture is talking to us here about, it can surely seem feel pretty weird when we talk about having joy about trials. I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't feel the greatest joy when I'm going through something that's extremely difficult. Amen. All right. I should get some amens in the chat for that. But here's the thing. It says in the word to consider it pure joy. Why does it say that? I mean, why does it say that? I think it's trying to help remind us of the challenge that's before us. And the challenge is, is that this hardship that we're going through, this trial, whatever you want to call it, it helps give us an opportunity for our faith to grow stronger. And when we trust God through difficult times, our faith is refined and it's deepened. Amen? This is why it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face these trials. Consider it joy. Why? Because, huh, God is working and moving even when life feels uncertain. Life is out of control. Everything's going crazy. God is still sovereign and he's still in control. And sometimes he uses all of the insanity of life to sometimes bring us into a place huh, to where we will be going through trials and we might be going through the pain of something. But through the end of it, God is wanting to work something new within our lives. Amen. And so this passage reminds us about that. Amen. And so it's important. If we say we have faith, our faith should be in the Lord. And when bad things do happen, because they do happen to us as Christians, okay, when bad things happen, huh, we have to know who we need to trust. And our trust should always be in the Lord. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He loves you. And our trust should be in him. So let's take a moment and let's talk about a little bit of this here tonight. Have you experienced something just so bad, so terrible that you feel like huh, it's made you have less faith? All right. Or has something so bad happened to you that you has gained great faith within your life with the Lord? All right. Tell us about your experience. All right. What has been your experience in trusting God during challenging times? As Pastor Phil just mentioned, what has been your experience with trusting God during challenging times? Have the trials and hardships propelled your faith? Or have the difficulties of life made you seem to wane in faith? Take a moment and discuss this and drop your comments in the chat. I'm back, and this is our final point here for the evening. Now, simply want to tell you about this. Faith is not passive. It's active. And as we talk about our next point, that's exactly where we're going to be going. 
because it's all about taking action on your faith, taking action on your faith. So we live in a world that is simply crazy. And the craziness of the world is always going to push you to believe more in it than it is even in God. It's going to push you to want to believe that if you just had more money, your life would be better. It's going to push you to believe that maybe if you were just famous, everything would be better. It would push you to believe that if you could just stay in the past, your life would be better. It's going to push you to believe that if you could just walk with the devil, it's going to be easier. But guess what? It's not. And as Christians, we need to be able to show that our faith is not passive, but it's active. And we have to be able to, in our lives, take action on our faith. What does that mean? (laughs) It means that we need to believe what we say and we need to speak what we believe. Amen. So developing a stronger faith involves stepping out in obedience to the Lord. And sometimes that path isn't very clear, but we need to take steps of obedience in our walk with the Lord, even when the path isn't clear. James chapter two, verse 17, it emphasizes it this way. It says, in the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied by action. It's dead. (laughs) I'm going to read that again. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. And so this verse, it calls us out to live our faith through what we do, our actions. Our actions should match our words. Our words should match our actions. And our life as a whole should be able to be given unto the Lord in direct obedience. Amen. And so whether it's a call to serve others, whether it's sharing the gospel, whether it's simply just trusting in God because you are in pain, you are hurting, you are in a situation where you just feel like you have been run over. It is about trusting God and his guidance and acting on this as it can help strengthen our faith. But what do we do sometimes? Sometimes our walk is not our talk and our talk is not our walk. And I believe that this is where we need to seek the Lord. The Lord will speak to us when things are not matching up correctly. And we need to take time out to be able to make our life right with him. Amen. Make our life right with the Lord. Right now, just quit watching. If you know there's something that's on your heart that you need to take to the Lord, just stop this and get right with the Lord. That's more important than anything else. And I truly believe that. And I believe that when we can get our lives right with the Lord, then the Lord is going to show us how to take action on the faith that we claim to have. Amen. And this means that he's going to use us in ways that maybe we don't even feel comfortable with. You know, sometimes we don't witness to people because we don't like talking to people. Sometimes uh, we don't share the gospel because it's an inconvenience to us and our, our way we think or our personality or something. I'm just here to tell you, God's going to do some crazy things in your life, but he's going to give you the strength to do it. And so here tonight, let's take a moment and let's discuss some of these things. How do you put your faith into action on a daily basis within your life? How do you put your faith into action in your daily life. Take a moment, type in the chat, and let's get to see how God is working within our lives here tonight. As Pastor Phil just mentioned, how do you put your faith into action in your daily life? Think about that for a second. What does your day-to-day look like when it comes to living out your belief in God? Where does placing your belief in God rank on a daily basis? Is it front and center, or is it sometimes pushed to the side with the busyness of life? Take a moment to reflect on this and drop your thoughts in the chat. We'd love to hear how you're making faith an active part of your everyday walk.
Here are some next steps that you can take to develop a stronger faith. Number one, immerse yourself in the scriptures. Make a habit of reading and meditating on God's word daily. Let his promises build your confidence and trust in him. Number two, embrace challenges. View trials or opportunities to grow in the faith. Trust that God is using these moments to strengthen you. Number three, act on your faith. Don't just believe, live out your faith through your actions. Step out in obedience to God, even when it's difficult. Let's take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of faith and for the many ways in which you continually want to work within our lives to strengthen it. God, we praise you for your promises. And we praise you, Lord, for the way in which you give us hope and assurance even when we can't see the path ahead, even when there's difficult trials, even when we feel like there's just so much darkness that surrounds us, God, we give you praise because you are the light of the world and you are the light that will guide us through all things. Lord, we come to you here tonight and we humbly confess that there have been probably times within our lives where our faith has just felt weak. And Lord, we ask for your help in deepening our trust in you, especially during times of uncertainty, especially during trials, especially during times when it just hurts the most. God, help us to live out our faith in a way that brings glory to your name. God, help us to not just talk the talk, but to walk the walk, Lord. Bring revival within our hearts and lives, God. Give us a passion, Lord, to be more like you, to be Christ-like in all that we do. Lord, we simply want to give you praise and thanks because, Lord, you have given us so many opportunities to help grow within our faith. God, we ask that you continually pour out more opportunities. Take time on us here tonight, Lord, to speak to each and every single person, every single heart, that is watching here tonight. Will you take time out to help show us, Lord, just exactly all of the opportunities that you bless us with every day to where we can grow in our faith. We pray especially tonight for our mobile sanctuary family and community that's online. We pray for each and every single person represented here tonight. We pray that every person, Lord, is encouraged and equipped to develop a stronger and more resilient faith, Lord. Lord, give us the courage and the means, Lord, to be able to step out in obedience, Father. Help nothing else hinder that, Father. Lord, will you be able to help us and just take us by the hand, Lord, and to be able to show us, Lord, how we can have a stronger faith in you. We thank you, Lord, for each and every moment and blessing, Lord, that you've bestowed upon us. And we praise you, Lord, for this moment that we're having with you right here tonight. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight on the Mobile Sanctuary. So I hope that this session has inspired you, and I hope that it can help you take some practical steps on developing a stronger faith. Remember that faith, it's a journey, all right? It's a journey, and each step that you take will bring you closer to the heart of God. Now, next week, we'll be back with another session, so stay tuned and keep seeking God in all things. So until next time, I'm Pastor Phil. This has been Church Anywhere. I'll see you soon. God bless. Take care. Welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary Where the broken find their way In the quiet of your heart Welcome to the place you call